Alright everybody, welcome to Bad Blender. Today we're going to be doing flaps. You want flaps? We got flaps. Yeah. So what we're going to want to do is just select everything with A, delete it, add a cube, delete that cube, and then add a plane because we don't like cubes, we like planes. Rotate that on the x-axis 90 degrees, and I like to create the origin point at the top, so we're going to go to edit mode, grab it on the Z negative 1, go into object mode, grab it on the Z 2. This just brings it up to the top with the origin point here, so if you want to rotate it, you can rotate it from the top. Next, go into edit mode and use control R to add in as many flaps as you'd like. So in this example, I'm going to go for 10 flaps because I find that to be a good number. And then once you've done that, add in some more vertical flaps. This uh, represents the detail your uh, simulation will have basically. So I tend to just go for squares. So I'm going to add in 10 again here. Um, but if you've got a longer door, for example, you might want to add more. OK, once that's done, go into face select mode and use alt and shift to select every other face here and then right click and do split. This just allows you to move them without moving the rest of them. It basically splits all the vertices on the edges. Next, what you're going to want to do is go into vertex mode and wireframe mode, select the top two lots of vertices, go into the green uh, data properties here and create a new vertex group, assign them to that and then rename it pinning. I've misspelled that, but fuck it. Next, you want to go back into object mode, back into solid mode and add in a subdivision surface modifier, set it to simple and then set them both to one. Underneath that, you're going to want to add a solidify modifier, set this to 0.02. Uh, this just gives it a little bit of thickness here. And what we're going to want to do before we go any further, really, we're going to want to go back into edit mode, select every face here and then in the top options here with the transform pivot point, set it to individual origins here and then just scale them down on the x axis. You can see it's scaling them all individually. Um, I'm just going to do it a little bit. So 0.95, just so there's a gap between them. This is important when it comes to the simulations later on. Speaking of simulations, let's add a cloth simulation to this. So you go into the physics options here and add a cloth simulation. Set the preset to, oh no, not shrink wrap, rubber. Uh, set the vertex mass to two kilograms, tension up to 30 and the bending up to 35. These are just values I found work quite well. Um, you want to scroll down a little bit more to where it says shape. Add the pin group to the pinning group you created earlier and then under collisions tick self collisions and then turn the friction up to like 10 or sorry down to 2 and then set the distance to 0 0.05 or 0 0.005 and on the distance for the object collisions as well turn that also down to 0 0.005 um the lower you go here the less uh fanning you'll get you'll see if i turn this up to like 1.1 meter and then i play the simulation you'll notice it it spreads out because the objects are trying to collide with each other so you turn down this distance as much as you can and there you go, you can see it's sitting perfectly. Next, what you're going to want to do is add in whatever object you want to come through the flaps. So it could be anything. In my case, it's a middle finger because fuck you. Uh, so yeah, move this into position behind the flaps and then you're just going to want to keyframe this uh, I to keyframe location at the start. Go to the frame you want to end it on. I'm going to go to like 120. Grab it on the Y axis a little bit and then we'll keyframe the location again. No, that's the wrong one. Keyframe the location again. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll end on frame 200 so that we go from 0 to 200 and we can see some of the flaps going on afterwards. And when you play this now, you'll see it moves through, but it doesn't actually interact with the simulation at all. So to get it to do that, you're going to want to go into the physics options for this hand or whatever object you've got coming through and add in a collision. And I like to turn up the collision to 10 or the friction on that to 10 and then turn the damping up to like 0.25. This just uh, helps it not be as aggressive with the flaps as it comes through them, especially if you're coming through them quite quickly. So now if you give this a play. Ta-da! You've got your middle finger coming through. Looks fantastic. Uh, one problem you do have is these flaps. You can see where they're bending because of all the faces. So what you're going to do is just select the flaps, right click and shade smooth, go into the object settings here under normals, auto smooth, and then turn that up to like 55 or 60, or you can adjust this number depending on how, how it looks for your particular piece. Okay, so we're done, but we're not done. We need to do a little bit more to make it a little bit nicer. Um, if all you wanted to do was learn how to do a flap, you've got flaps, go have fun with your flaps. Uh, if you want to learn more, stay. So what we're also going to do is add a box around it. So we're going to add a mesh, add a cube, grab it on the Z axis one, Grab it on the Y axis one. Uh, go into edit mode and delete the front face because we don't need it because it sucks. Uh, select every other face and then go Alt E and extrude along normals however far you, you want the thickness of the box to be. Um, and then grab these, go into edge select mode, grab the front edges here and extrude them on the Y axis inwards to the box a little bit. There we go. So now you've got a box and you've got a hand. It comes out of the box. Fantastic. Uh, the box needs collisions though, so we'll go into the collision options again and add another one. We'll do the same. 0.25, oops, 0.25 on the damping, and then we'll go up to 10 on the curve and the friction. Um, one thing you'll notice is if you play it now, you can see these these glitch a little bit at the start. That's because they're touching the edge of the box. 
at the bottom and the top here. So what you want to do is just select these edges at the top here again, and you want to just scale them on the Z axis like 0.05 or something. Sorry, 1.05, no, a little bit less, just so they're not touching it. And so when you play it now, you still get some fucking issues. Uh, so we'll just undo what we just did and scale them a little bit more. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect because at the end of the day, I don't think you're going to notice too much. Although we are still getting some issues at ah, the thickness outer 0.005. There we go. There we go, fantastic. We've got a hand bursting through the flaps. So finally, just add some materials to this basically. So what we're gonna do is for the box, we'll go into the material preview here and we'll open up a new window by dragging up there and we'll set this new window to shader editor. We'll add a new shader for the box here and we will just create a Voronoi texture and we'll pl plug that straight into a normal map, not a B normal map, there we go. Plug the color of that into the color of the normal map and then plug that into the normal. So once that's done, you can turn the scale of the texture up to like 100 so that you've got this sort of galvanized pattern going on. And then we'll turn the strength down to 0.05 on the normal. And then we'll turn up the metallicness so it's a metallic. Uh, and then we will reduce the roughness to like 0.25 because I like to have a nice shiny box. So there we go, pretty much done for the box. For these flaps at the front here, we want them to be a plasticky color. So to get it to look like plastic, we'll go to the roughness of 0.1. We'll turn up the transmission all the way to 1. And then we'll turn the alpha down to 0.75. And we'll also turn the transmission roughness all the way up as well. If you're using EV, make sure you go into the material options down the bottom here and set it to alpha blend and alpha hashed. Um, but we want to actually use cycles for this, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to change over to cycles, GPU compute, change all these settings. You don't have to copy me for these, but these are just the settings I like to use. There we go. And so in the preview, if we go to render now, you'll see it's very dark because we don't have an environment. Go to the world, click on this little box here, change it to environment, open your HDRIs. Let's just go with construction yard. There we go, that looks good. And if you don't want to see the HDRI in the background, at the top of the uh, options here, go to world, duplicate this material here, and then add in a mix shader. Plug those both into those options there, and then add a light path node and then put the is camera ray into the factor there. And you might need to switch them around. There we go. Fantastic. So now when you play this, a middle finger appears. Wonderful. Let's just give that hand a texture as well. Go back into object mode here and then we'll change the color to like a skin color. There we go. Wonderful. Uh, I like to set up orthographic cameras with these. So add camera, view, align view, active camera to view. We will drag over this window. We don't need that as much anymore. And we'll set up our camera option. So I'm going to go for a 1080 by 1080 camera there. Change the camera mode to orthographic. Press N to bring up these side panel windows here. And we'll just set the Y rotation to zero, the Z rotation to 45, and the X rotation to 70. We'll then adjust some of these values here. So we'll go for a transform of four and then a negative five, five. So that's nice and squared up. And then we'll just decrease the zoom on the orthographic camera a little bit. Oops. If you accidentally leave the camera view, you can just press zero on the numpad or go up to view cameras, active camera there. You can go back into the camera view. Fantastic. So now we have a finger coming out of the box. And so now you're pretty much done. You can just go into the render settings, set them up however you want and render it out. Okay. So now we are actually done. Uh, you can do whatever you want with this. Uh, you can make flaps. You can do not flaps. Uh, but if you don't do flaps, I don't know why you're watching this video. You want flaps. Go play with your flaps, guys. Bye.